right welcome to the ninth lecture yeah, yeah. yeah probably on random processes yes, so <clears throat> to quickly sum up what we have been doing we started with saying that the the world has uncertainties right we discussed the reasons causes of those uncertainties and the benefits of use including those uncertainties in our calculations or models yeah so in that thread we went to embracing uncertainty <laughs> so we kind of rewrote our mathematics to now include random event random variable and random process from deterministic models to including everything random and when we embraced uncertainty in there we said okay x is now going to be some random variable instead of the deterministic thing yeah now we say okay now how do we collect how do we um let's say efficiently represent functions of this uncertainty yeah we defined a measure on this we defined formally the um, kolmogorov axioms and also the measure the probability measure on x yeah but the measure itself how do we now collect this measure in some efficient functions we went to the density function distribution function yeah pmf mass function pdf cumulative distribution function joint pdf and all that yeah after that what did we do we say okay now these although they are very nice to talk about the the entirety of the random variables uncertainty its probability values all of that but together uh, or in this collected form they might be too cumbersome yeah too too inefficient too much information it may not look like this here in single variable but when we go to processes i will show you these these blow up into families of distributions for every member of the random process okay and then it becomes really crazy so what we did was <coughs> we said we will extract some useful information from here yeah and that led us to the idea of moments and this is where we are now in the course yes <clears throat> so in the moments we have so far discussed the mm -hmm. first That's moment yeah so what did we talk about it what did we learn about the first moment uh, which was the mean mm -hmm. uh, what could you re just recall quickly anything that you learned this is the worth of it's the it represents the expected worth of the random variable yes okay that's one thing what else center of mass center of mass of the distribution the worth directly connects to the random variable whereas this other interpretation correct connects it to the distribution yes center of mass of the distribution where the odds and the worth of the odds that evens out yeah so we saw that uh, in detail last time so for example if we had let's say something that had three possible values x1 x2 x3 yes and we said okay each of these possible values can occur with let's say probabilities px1 this one occurs with probability px2 this one occurs with probability px3 yeah now where is the center of mass of x where is the expected worth or value of x and we said okay if we don't know we could start by putting say on a general point call it the mean yes and then as you apply in physics moment arm times the Force. force so each one has its moment arm i could say x2 uh, x1 x1 minus yeah. mu x yes. times what force yeah. it exerts yeah. p x1 yeah. plus 
x2 minus mu x what force it exerts yes, x2 yes. plus x3 minus mu x why minus mu x it's from the center of mass yeah. if it is to be the center of mass yeah? yeah so we set our problem so that whatever we solve for mu x will be the center of mass by this formulation yes so whatever force it applies and when we set it to zero yeah. balances out yes now what is the worth um, overall um, from or the uh, the force it applies here now this leads to the center of mass leads to the average worth yes. uh, expected worth formula we solved it remember we came up with the formula that had some summation of px1 x2 x3 we knew that had to be 1 and that led to the simplification that mu x was for this particular case what was it x1 x i p x i and in our in this case it's 1 2 3 but the general formula x k p x k for continuous you can imagine we won't do like this we will have something continuous and you will take small strips infinitesimally thin strips and it will lead to an integral yes straightforward yes. now here this is center of mass how far are you from the center and that leads to this which is the worth formula yes what is the value 10 how likely is it to occur that puts its weight if a value is very large but it's very less likely to occur then it contributes now yes. the product contributes alone neither the probability contributes nor the value mm -hmm. their product has to be large for you to think okay this value is more likely mm -hmm. or the um, overall this worth is more likely yeah so again it was a quick summary we went through it in great detail i'll just uh, summarize it really fast and that was our what did we call it the mean for the first moment first what other names did it have we discussed last time average it goes by moment. many names average first moment mean first moment what else average, average. and and center expected expected values value center of mass people normally don't use but you could <laughs> of the pdf that's fine um now I mentioned something about this guy. All these three are the same, but this one is actually not really um, among them. Yeah, exactly. It is a special case of the others. You okay, know how is average? The way we normally deal with it in daily life is different from um, this side. Any guess? You you care to make a quick guess? Anybody? so we are here okay in moments yeah this is let's say in a way third module of our course the second lecture on moments right so i give you three numbers yeah 2 6 i ask you to find its their average don't find it yeah how do you find it calculate karna just tell me how you will do it the sum the number and divide okay 2 plus 6 plus 7 divided by what number of terms is 3 yes. yeah this is the normal notion of average yes now why do i say this is a special case of the mean or the first they have the same weights they have the same yes when you are doing averages you are actually saying i am going to assign equal probabilities to all of them i gave you three numbers i asked you to find average why did you assign equal equal weights equal probabilities to all of them what you did was you said 2 this one value is 2 and its probability is 1 by 3 yes then you said 6 and its probability is 1 by 3 then you said 7 and its probability 1 by 3 so how is it a special case it's a special case by applying uniform equity yeah. uniform yeah. distribution yeah. yes but why do we do that in daily life when we average <laughs> why do we do it 
it was in some experiment they replay probably uh, random variable like dice but you don't do that uh, like when somebody says what's the average you say uh, this much you don't say uh, they are equally likely or you don't think that yeah daily life the there are two reasons firstly in the absence of any other information you have to assume that everything is equally likely yeah. somebody gives you three numbers doesn't say where they are coming from what are their chances of happening nothing you just get three numbers you get 10 numbers you are asked to find their average what's your best shot give them equal chances secondly if the data is large enough you know the probabilities will assign themselves according to the frequency of this guy let me show you what if i give you um what if i ask you to find the probability of uh, sorry the average of 2667 these are four numbers yes how will you find it will you still do 2 plus 6 plus 7 by 3 or something else by 4 what do you do, do? by 4 yes but notice what you actually did was you said number 2 appears with probability 1 by 4 6 appears with probability 2 by 4 thus based on the data you are out of this approach automatically includes if you have enough data it automatically includes the repetitions and changes the probability weight of that repeated so if you have no other information other than this average is still a very good idea it will cover uh, the probability chances based on yeah if you know the background of this then you can of course go and assign the actual ones then don't work with this in the background it may turn out to be exactly this what you did but it doesn't have to that's why average is a special case of so you see two and four seven appear with one fourth probability and six has double probability compared to each one yeah. together the probability sum to one one yes so average is a special case and it's a good idea so i imagine this is a very large number and six appears a hundred times and seven appears just once and two appears ten times what will happen you will be weighing their probabilities by that much automatically yeah so uh, here now see there actually there are just three numbers yes two has a probability one by four seven has a probability one by four mm -hmm. and six has a probability by and these probabilities are uh, uh, assigned by the frequency of appearance yeah and in some ways this is um, one frequentist approach counting probabilities by frequencies yeah uh, there is bayesian approach which uh, we will see maybe later uh, where you assign some prior belief or probability to something but before I go on to, uh, we wanted to go on to the higher moment, second order moment. I want to cover this thing uh, from last lecture. Uh, with this, we are mostly done with defining the concepts of the mean. Uh, last question I asked you last time was, was the mean of a constant. constant. You found it. <laughs> yeah. The what was it? Constant. The constant itself. Yeah. From the center of mass, you can see. Expected worth is also the constant itself because that is what you expect to see. Okay. Actually, uh, when we have a data like suppose uh, we have uh, people in the mean of average of class marks, uh, 50 students in a class. So suppose that the um, 48 students have below 10 marks and the two students have actually 48 and 49 marks and we are calculating their mean. Then it's almost about uh, you could say for 25 26 then it's not going to be a very good approximate that I, we are saying expectation matches 25 but there is no one student who has been 25 marks yeah so how how will we deal in that case with an expectation yeah um there we will go to what the next topic is yeah, yeah. alone expectation can be insufficient yeah what expectation does do often is to locate where on this let's say number line you are uh, working let's say you what marks did you say 
uh, let's suppose at 40 at 50 students are there and 48 students have below 10 marks so most of them have marks here yeah and then some of them have about 48 and 50 marks yeah here yes so now when you find the mean let's say you let's say you find the this guy because this distance uh, this weight is much more mm -hmm. here too mm -hmm. many here yeah okay often we call the mean also the uh, location parameter so your distribution is kind of uh, high then low and then something like that yeah so the mean often helps us identify okay where most of the distribution or we expect to see now in another problem the mean might be or the values that you have right might be on a may not be marks of students yeah, or they might be marks out of 1100 yeah now out of 1100 this whole thing would shift to the right yes so often mean is also called the location parameter it just helps you locate and alone uh, it can have meaning it can have like i mentioned in the case of the lottery uh, in the case of the uh, bet we had heads and tails heads you win 1000 rupees tails you lose 100 rupees you can guess from there so yes not in all cases you will be able to use the mean alone to make some useful judgment but it works with what we are doing so here i've written need for the next moment yeah so let's say mean alone does not give a full picture of what you're getting yourself into let's say i tell you there is a game we're going to play a game where if you get a head toss a coin you get a head <laughs> if there is a head you get a rupees um, so the positive is here so if there is heads you get a rupees and if it is tails you lose yes. a rupees and let's write heads and tails here and they are both equally then probable yeah now what's the expected worth of this game zero, zero. Yes. yeah should be should you be worried playing this game based on just the mean no, sir. it seems it's fine no, no big deal yeah because the average worth is zero yeah. so you shouldn't be too worried about playing this game yeah but this in this decision is very misleading you just made your decision based on the expected worth alone now let's say this a was 100 fine you can give me 100 yeah even if you lose six times in a row what if a was a million rupees do you have a million rupees mm. you don't right even though the expected worth is zero that value alone is going to trick you you may say yeah i can play this game but do you have a million rupees to give me or two million to play 10 times maybe you lose 10 times this is probability <laughs> yeah so mean alone can be misleading yes it has information in many cases but definitely we don't uh, in most cases we don't work with it alone okay then we go to its bigger cousin so this is the first moment yeah we go to the second moment which is what variance variance yes and its relations the covariance correlations if there are multiple uh, variables yeah so then let us see what is variance and what that brings to the table yeah in terms of information so for for the teacher making decisions here the teacher says my students get on average 25 marks i'm happy <laughs> yes but when this teacher will go to variance and see oh my god what's going on there are some top performers and then everybody else is over there yeah of course if you draw the distribution you already see it no problem but remember the whole thing about moment was to replace the distribution with their representative values so 
in most of what we do first and second moments are sufficient but that people are not uh, stopping there um, there are third order moments fourth order moments being used especially in neural networks now yeah but for us to work with them becomes harder i will come to that what it um, if for many practical purposes these two and yeah. this is not one thing for me yeah it's it's co it's variance covariance correlation they are also in here they are one way or the other they are the second moment the information they contain is linked to the second moment yeah so then you have heard of variance many times yeah what is variance measure of dispersion mm -hmm. it's a average spread from the mean position to a given a data yeah so both of these is the in in simplest word it is the a measure of how spread out the data okay. is yes overall how spread out the data is um of course the mean is a center of mass so if it is spread out it will be uh, from the uh, mean um it it's a measure of variation in the data also <coughs> how much variation do you see in the data and as you say it's the uh, spread uh, from the expected value so i'll first write the formula and then i we will discuss it as you've already mentioned what it is representing so v we will call it v x yeah new symbol now previously did we write this as e x or i forgot so this mu x this thing has this standard notation e x yeah that is this is not an operator this is just a variable we use conventionally this is an operator yeah? e of x so similarly v of x which of course you know sigma x square normally we write is defined as now the v is defined in terms of the e okay one operator is designed in terms of another operator uh, e what is it x minus mu x squared yeah okay first let's write the formulas then we will look at what's going on so what discrete case mein kya hoga summation mm -hmm. summation over all x i x i minus mu x square um that's it yeah and here what will be probability of x of oh yeah sorry this is expected value so probability, probability of x i yeah is a constant as a rule right then what you have here x minus f for yes yes remember when we discussed the density i said this will behave as a proxy for the discrete it will appear in the very same ways where this guy was appearing even though it has a different interpretation yeah so right um this is what you get and you can see from here what is it saying what is this statement saying you have already mentioned it i like to say that uh, it's a measure of how much right uh, in square sense so we have a square here how much the the random variable yes varies from its mean the degree of spread from its mean kitni is ke andar um, what's the uh, square root of variance deviation yeah so kitni is ke andar how much deviation there is <laughs> right that's why that's that's the word we use also so variance deviation from the mean all that they are related here uh, and uh, i think they, that is mostly um, what it does uh, we often represent it as what um, yeah. like square yeah why square because sigma x is the deviation so it's deviation <laughs> that's a square root of this yeah so wo, that comes later the actual definition is uh, variance and then standard deviation is the square root of yeah so 
if you take the square root of this, it's not the same as saying e x minus you know, x square square root. Yeah, it's whole square. <laughs> okay, well, that's different. So, why square? Kabi soche? Why do we always write variance as a square? Um, variance is always positive because it's spread yeah. on both sides, so that's why it's positive. So, we can actually see this is, we know that this is going to be a positive value. Yeah. And why is that a positive value from here? This is all of these values because of the square are positive. positive. Now you are taking the mean average worth of positive values. Can, they, can the average worth of positive values ever be negative? No. So to emphasize that we normally write it like this and then the standard deviation is derived as the square root of this thing, fig max. So why are we calculating variance like in terms of scale? Because we are saying that how much it deviates from the data set. So yes. there's an expected expectation value that mm. we have uh, calculated and we are taking the average spread. So why do you scale for mm. the Good computer? question. Why do you think? We, we want a measure of the spread. Yes, average spread. And as you say, um, why this one? Okay, let's uh, take it away. What's the risk? Well, the risk might be, the data set might be negative. So what's wrong with that? So let's, let me take away the square firstly, yeah? So if I take away the square, uh, x minus mu x, uh, this is e x. Uh, I will teach you later that this is a <laughs> linear operator. Zero. <laughs> yes. yes so what to kya? Zero. So what what's happening? Positive values are cancelling out the negative values because by very definition mu x hai aisi jagah pe pa, right? So uh, so what then do you do? What do you do? If you are if you are interested in um, Measuring how much distance a person covers, let's say, or a, a mass covers and the your starting position is zero. Yes, and you want to know how much distance is covering. Yes, so let's say there is a uh, mass connected to some sort of a spring and there is a mass here and this mass can go like this. Yeah, now if you just calculate the negatives and the positives, it, you will say it doesn't cover any distance. That's called displacement. Okay, that also has some meaning. Average displacement is zero. Fine. But did it not cover any distance? Chara idhar udhar ja ja ke thak gaya. If you want to add all of those, it goes here, it goes here, it goes here, it goes here, it goes here. There's some way you have to make this positive because you have to count that. Euclidean distance mein kya karte aap? Square karke karte ho. Right? So, is square the only way to make it positive? Issue was that the negatives and the positives they just uh, trick you with and you don't get the actual measure of spread. Yeah, so we went to square, but it's not the only way. Absolute. 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 Why not use absolute? Yes, why not? So think about it. This will, this will, in some way, it will serve the purpose really. This could have been the uh, second moment, okay, or the so let's say. It could have been the measure of spread. Measure theory is not like it's not. Uh, you decide many things. Yeah, you define the measure. But what's wrong with this? What's let's say not wrong. Uh, what's the challenge with this? When you did calculus, when professors wanted to give you a tough problem to solve for differential integral, and they would they would give you absolutes or not? There are discontinuities, right? And a discontinuity. This is negative. Uh, a negative, it's like this. Positive, like this. But the issue is discontinuity. Now imagine the square guy, very nice and smooth, yes, everywhere. Yes. So we wanted to get rid of this issue of negative. And of course, there are not one way. Even more functions exist that could make negatives positive. But believe me, uh, the most elegant. And the simplest we can come to 
is the square. That is actually, you could say that is the way of marrying. And exactly. Marrying in that way only it is. <coughs> Just like we, when we deal with metric space, we have lots of metric. That's what that I said, measures. Metric, yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, Euclidean distance is not the only distance. There is this um, uh, Mahalaban, I forgot its name. Taxi cab. Yeah, so many so kind of distances, right? Distance yeah. Space. So, same here. In this case, uh, we have been sticking to the EX square. square. Okay. It serves the purpose. The negative part is made positive and it remains very analytically elegant okay we will see we will expand this with the square and things will be become will happen if you had stuck to this thing and then you try to play with put two variables here or something you will end up trying to use Cauchy inequalities and all that and if you want to differentiate you are stuck Here's a, here's a discontinuity, here's a discontinuity. You'll be just going <laughs> crazy. Instead of having some useful measure to represent the PDF, you'll be just all the time stuck in the mathematical nitty gritties. Yeah? So, in that sense, it's a rather um, smart thing. Mm, yeah. Uh. <coughs> okay. So, now we know, okay, high variance, low variance, very high spread, low spread, that is um, A. So, low variance, um, I'll draw some and you tell me which ones have high variance. So, there's a distribution that goes like this, continuous, let's say. And then there's a distribution that goes like this, let's say, a little bit here. And then there's a distribution that is like this. So which one of these have high variance and which ones have low variance? The third one is high. Assuming the x-axis is the same, yeah. X scaling is scale is same. The third one is the highest. <coughs> yeah, you, you don't have to say which one is highest, but overall I've seen this one is low variance. Yes. Yes. The data is spread out in a smaller region. Here it spread out much uh, broader. Here it doesn't look like it spread out because it seems to be concentrated in two values. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the example of the heads and tails I gave you if you were uh, winning minus one million rupees. Yes, um, sorry, losing and winning is million rupees which is probably not much worth much these days. <laughs> anyway, and half uh, probability. So, <clears throat> does this have high variance? <laughs> yeah. Now, this, this is a bit tricky. This is easy to say, very spread out. Yeah. This is not spread out, concentrated. Yes? Is this spread out? <laughs> You see, you have to see the average worth, yeah, and in every worth you have how far you are and um, how much there is here. This is not that big a deal, but you're very far out. What did you say? It was the deviation or spread from the mean, mm -hmm. yeah. You know the mean is going to be somewhere here, yeah. This is a huge deviation <laughs> from the mean, mm -hmm. yeah. So. Even this case is very high variance. Okay. So, now together, the variance and the mean. For a single random variable, the mean and the variance together, usually in most applications, give you enough information to make your decisions. Okay. You will find when you work with the estimation theory, detection theory, um, scientific applications, <coughs> most applications go up to these two. <coughs> That's very powerful. You are able to replace this huge PDF functions with two representatives if it's a random variable. If, the, if it is a random process, then you will have to come to covariances as well because then there are, we will come to that later yeah 
but <clears throat> first moment, second moment together, very nice. Now, if I give you uh, this game, so in the third game, <coughs> where will be its expected expected value? <coughs> where do you think? Agar ye equal hai kisi ek, whatever the, let's say this is a straight line or almost zero here. Yeah, then we expect uh, where would you put the wedge? Yeah. 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 Middle yoga. Uh, if the heights are the same, uh, then whatever the middle point is is going to be. Yeah. Now it could be this. Uh, it is could be same thing as this minus <laughs> that's a million and plus a million. Then of course this is at zero. The mean is tricky. tricky okay. Yes, alone it makes you feel yeah okay we're not dealing with something big, <laughs> but the variance will tell you oh, hang on. Yes, the mean is zero, but you could lose millions and you could gain millions. Do you have that money to bet? Uh, let's say you, you do it three times and unluckily there are three tails and only one head. Yes. So with that, <coughs> that's not the only use of course. I'm just giving example from gambling uh, often it is believed that probability theory developed from gambling <laughs> so uh, we go for that but we will come to other of course uses of this thing right so um quick question for you guys what is the variance of a constant <coughs> <laughs> so what's your answer zero, because zero? yes so Variance of a constant is zero. Can you show it from the <coughs> formula? <coughs> Try it out. Constant uh, C has this only one value with probability is equal to 1. So mean is here, we saw that mean is the so constant is itself. C. So EC was C. C. And find <coughs> and C. From the idea of a spread, you can already see there is no spread, so it should be 0. <coughs> Were you able to find it from here also? Okay? Right. So Basically, <coughs> you will say that um, is expected value of c minus mu c square, right? And uh, <coughs> since this is constant, yeah, so mu c is c, which is zero. So you are looking for the expected value of zero square, that is zero. Yeah. Okay. So that. Um, <coughs> goes for this. Now, let's generalize this. <coughs> <coughs> and see what we mean by kth moment or let's say uh, to generalize it and then extract these first and second moments from that thing. So, do you know the third moment? What is it called? Skewness. Yes. <coughs> is it skewness or uh, kurtosis? Which one? Skewness. Huh? So, mean gives you where to locate the distribution, where to put the pin, a central position. Yeah. <coughs> then, <coughs> variance usually tell you how spread out you're expecting your data to be around that mean. <coughs> then there is skewness and kurtosis. Skewness normally represents <coughs> if the distribution is metric or skewed. Skewed covers an opposite of yeah. symmetric. Yeah. Yes, yes. So this information is not there in the first two. Okay. So a distribution <coughs> might be very symmetric, yeah, or it may be skewed towards heavy tail to the left. 
<coughs> skewness could be not so pronounced sometimes it's fine but that information can come in handy um, now we usually don't need to go there <coughs> yeah and then there is <coughs> ketosis also you can read on that and we don't we don't have to stop there this kth moment you can go up to <coughs> some of these have names others don't have names um, some even may not have a physical interpretation that we understand okay so um, as i said luckily we don't need, normally need to go that high so i will write <coughs> <coughs> the kth moment we call it x i k for the discrete case and you can imagine the continuous case so yeah p x i <coughs> this is the kth moment, moment. yeah and this is <coughs> this is called non central moment okay non you will probably or you have heard these names before i just want to cover it quickly so then what's a central moment well in a central moment you take out the the mean, the mean. <clears throat> so you make your distribution or your uh, your mom uh, your the moment yeah independent of the location okay when you do that <clears throat> you of mostly end up or basically end up in <clears throat> and this is called the central moment, moment. now <clears throat> Kth uh, non-central moment, kth central moment. There is not a huge difference. Uh, depends for your your application. Yeah. Now where is the mean? Which one is mean? K is one. K is we one can agree one. there to that. That's what makes it the first moment. Yeah. That's fine. But which one? Jada <coughs> formula. <coughs> mean ka. P x is x. P x. So ye one. Yeah. So mean is the first non-central non moment. Okay, first central moment is always <coughs> zero. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Now, uh, <coughs> what about variance? K equal to two. Which one? Second. <laughs> Second one, yeah. The way we define it, so uh, variance is the second central, central moment. Okay. So similarly, <coughs> you can have third, fourth. If you put k equal to three, three you get skewness. K equal to four, you get ketosis. Uh, we won't be going into that. What I do want you to know <coughs> is something or two important terms. That are used in literature, in uh, modern um, neural networks, etc. Also, up to q k equal to two, <coughs> k equal to one, two k. Uh, if you stay within this, for all your operations, analysis, everything you are doing remains within the first two moments. We call it low order statistics. Yes, statistics. <coughs> If you go to greater than two, not equal, yeah, equal is here. Greater than two, we call it higher, higher order statistics. In my masters, I work with higher order neural networks. They are called HON, H-O-N-N, and they were using statistics above this guy. Yeah. But other than that, I have rarely used. <coughs> higher order statistics but now with the, there were issues uh, mostly this was covering our problems very well but then <clears throat> there were computation issues when we come to another module of this course called estimation we will see or at least i'll mention that higher the statistic a harder it is to, to estimate based on data 
from if you have the formula for this yeah go ahead solve it fine but real life doesn't give you formulas real life gives you data big data means huge calculations to go here and if after huge calculations the improvement in your algorithm in your results is only 0.1 percent you may say yeah let's skip it yeah <clears throat> but if the improvement is huge then you should go here provided that you can do that improvement in a reasonable time if your mobile has a neural network algorithm to find your uh, match your face and <clears throat> it wants to work with the 10th order statistics and then it takes 10 days to for it to unlock <laughs> will you use it no but the interesting thing is now with modern computations it has become very much possible to even compute these things big data is available big data crunching devices these even the smallest uh, chips microprocessors <coughs> um, are now able to handle huge data sets yeah so uh, we we are slowly bringing these in but so far uh, we've been working with these things uh, the thing i want you to know for now is when we talk about higher order statistics either that's being used by a neural network or some estimator we are talking about going beyond the first two moments mm -hmm. okay <clears throat> now for our purposes uh, this course will remain here <laughs> okay if you want this then there are additional courses non-stationary processes and um, uh, to to handle higher order statistics uh, of the processes right <clears throat> there is also um, another good reason to maybe stick to the first two moments we will come to that and that has something to do with our most famous or most favorite uh, distribution which one is it Gaussian. Gaussian yeah Gaussian distribution will show up again and again um, there are reasons why Gaussian distribution shows up so much in real data and why it is important we will see that you have seen it before uh, <clears throat> in the form of central limit theorem but we will see that again later for now I just want to point out here uh, that Gaussian distribution which often shows up in data is fully characterized by these two moments first and second formula yaad hai first and e to power what is it x minus mu x divided by sigma x square yeah so the distribution if you look at the distribution kya chahiye is mu x sigma x yes two values only two of these can characterize the distribution completely you don't need to go higher in fact uh, if you solve these for <coughs> the kth moment for the gaussian distribution it always comes out for any k above 2 it comes out in terms of the first and second or it's zero it comes out zero or it's a formula here that is written in terms of mean and variance so knowing them fully characterizes the Gaussian behavior and a lot of real data real problems behave as normal distributed Gaussian distribution so <clears throat> it's not just that there is computation issue uh, it has mostly been sufficient but then of course yeah if you want to really go deeper and <coughs> find links that you couldn't find before chat GPT he said what are they doing they are going into much higher orders yeah to find things that the find the links that you haven't even thought of you know many links in mean variance these things I can imagine what they mean but if you go higher and higher I, I know it's maths but you cannot imagine the neural networks are now solving those links finding those links yeah so <clears throat> um, right <coughs> we still have some time so I'll mention one last topic for today um, the moments will continue this module on moments is uh, going to continue uh, for maybe two more lectures at least uh, <coughs> 
but um, do moments always exist that's <coughs> an interesting question you know this was over all values of i this could be this is discrete so it can be countably infinite okay. yes so maybe the sum doesn't converge yeah we we had some conditions there for convergence but this is a new thing now maybe this sum doesn't converge similarly the continuous case is an integral minus infinity to infinity maybe the <coughs> integral doesn't converge or <coughs> it's it could be infinite so what do you think can it happen do moments always exist Probably hard for you to tell now but uh, just so you know there are distributions whose moments are either infinite or undefined, undefined. okay so I have written two examples here Pareto's distribution <coughs> there is a family of distribution with alpha parameter so when alpha is less or equal to 1 the Pareto's distribution has a mean <coughs> its mean is infinite so there can be distribution families with specific parameters when you put those parameters in there their mean becomes <coughs> infinite now the distribution itself satisfies all the conditions of a distribution Kolmogorov all that it covers but means doesn't exist then what do you do then you are stuck. You it says I don't have a representative value <laughs> as a mean. Okay, so <clears throat> I won't go into what you do there. Then there is Cauchy distribution. This Cauchy guy, whenever his name comes, there's some complication, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> it seems he didn't want to work with easy things. <laughs> anyway, so Cauchy's distribution, uh, <clears throat> the mean is undefined. Now you may have noticed that I'm using two terms here. The one is infinite, the other is undefined. Maths What's the difference? difference? Maths, guys. <coughs> undefined means there, there might be lots of possibilities in that case. Mm -hmm. so expectation. Mm. Infinity means going to be a huge number, actually. The huge number. So when you say lots of possibilities, in mathematics, usually when do we end up with that? It's undefined. Mm -hmm. so we can, it could be, in mathematics, we have to choose some a rigorous point or some rigorous thing. <coughs> so, yeah. yeah. So in this case, I, I write it out uh, just as an example. Um, this is just a curiosity because you guys are from mathematics side, so you enjoy this. Of course. <coughs> you know, for the let's say for the continuous case, this is our mean. Right, so we could write the mean as let's say uh, in two parts a to infinity x fx dx plus what minus for some for some a yeah now what are the possibilities on these <coughs> both of these I'll write the possibilities and then you tell me. Um, what happens? Both might be finite. Then the sum is finite. The distribution, the mean exists and is finite. Yeah, right. Then this might be finite, and this might be plus minus infinity. Yes. Then what happens? <coughs> the mean exists and it is infinite. infinite. The large or to to the left, to the right, for the yeah. Then it might be that <coughs> this is infinite and this is finite again the same situation. Yes. yes. Then you may have this is infinite and this is infinite. This is infinite. Infinity large to the right side. And then you may have let's say if I don't miss any minus infinity, minus infinity again, infinity large but to the negative side. Yes. This is where problems start to occur. <coughs> in mathematics this infinity minus infinity is undefined, undefined. 
yeah similarly minus infinity and plus infinity is undefined. undefined yeah so cauchy's case leads to this kind of problem okay whereas uh, parito's distribution in alpha less or equal to 1 uh, is one of these where you end up with <coughs> either two uh, infinites adding up or one finite and infinite and yeah okay so if you hear that the distribution has an infinite mean and if you hear that the distribution has an undefined mean uh, or the mean is undefined <coughs> just know that these are two different cases okay um this is more of a curiosity you can read up more on this later um yeah i think um let's see there is more to do here so yeah we can stop here um any questions so far next time i will do some important um, or useful operations or formulas for uh, variance okay because we often have to analytically solve for variances yeah so it's good to <clears throat> know what are the tricks and we will talk about covariance correlation independence all that yeah Can we do in such a if we fail in first moment, second moment, can we jump to third moment? Or we have to first, <coughs> first moment and second moment, then we have to move on third moment. No, no, the formula, uh, if it allows. Uh, for example, we had this um, second non, uh, the non central moment didn't have the first moment mu x in them. Yeah. So there you can work with it, but. For this case where you had, uh, you know, x minus mu x k k at central moment, there you needed this guy. So if you're saying it is undefined or infinite, you may not be able to go in this direction, but this <coughs> might still be possible. I'm not saying it will always be possible, but yeah, yeah, you could. It's an interesting exercise. Just look for, try to find distributions that have some moments. and not others yeah just try to see that um <clears throat> right any more questions no 